there's kind of this idea in a lot of large organizations, and typically the larger the organization, the more I've seen this, where there's this sort of scarcity model that exists. In other words, there's this idea that every organization is subject to limited resources, and if, if you get resources, that's resources that I could potentially get. And so oftentimes data silos become more cemented or more firm in organizations because of this scarcity model where people look at it as a scarce resource, they protect it, they prevent other people from getting it. Um, and so that can obviously lead to kind of this negative connotation of data silos. As they become larger and more and more isolated, they end up standing in the way of really being able to get better opportunity in your marketing uh, marketing activities. And the hardest part, I think, is finding a finding a technology that everybody agrees should should hold the the, the stitching right. So it should be the right. hub. I mean, in our case, you've got different groups which are all very powerful, very well funded, have strong executive sponsorship. Who think that they should own right that their uh, that their silo should be the hub. And so finding a technology that everybody agrees to give up some of their control and defer to is still, I mean, we, you know, negotiating between IT, between marketing, between analytics, you know, right, who should own this? And so, you know, you have to find a solution that everybody's willing to defer to. By federating your systems and using a solution that allows things to connect together and then showing the action immediately, that ends up winning more hearts and minds than just simply going in and dictating by fiat how things actually need to play out. The most important thing we did from a federation standpoint is really draw a line in the sand and say, what exactly is our keying structure going to be so that we can connect these disparate systems? And we recognized that this needed to, by its very nature, be a tiered approach. So in other words, we didn't just simply say we wanted to do digital multi-channel. We recognized that we have enough offline customers, yes, even HPE has offline customers, right? where we needed to think about things from a full multi-channel and a digital multi-channel standpoint. And so the most important thing for us to do to federate these different systems together so that we have the right visibility of the customer at any given point is to design what that key structure actually needed to work, look like. From there, the actual connection of the data actually became much easier because audience stream naturally is going to connect all of those primary keys and foreign keys together and through visitor stitching be able to allow us as we gain additional information about different customers Customers, what it is we can do to be able to take action on them. Of course, actioning on the data is second nature at this point because once we get the information into audience stream and we define the segments correctly, all of that keyed visitor stitched data then becomes available not just to push back in to our digital context. I mean, the case that I was using right here was being able to move it over into target. That's a digital to digital type of connection. But now we suddenly have the ability to connect it in more, more broadly to any of our multi-channel uh, vendors that we might actually have. So for us, it became a very concrete use case around how we use audience stream as our glue to be able to connect together all of our disparate sources and our different data silos into a broader, more actionable type of view of the customer.